Hi everyone, welcome to another Clean Machine Live. My name is Jeff Palmer. I'm the CEO and founder of Clean Machine. We're an all natural plant-based fitness nutrition company. This video is for informational and educational purposes only and is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. So this one, this is a brand new study is just out, July, 2023 brand new study to the market. My frustration with this study is why did it take this long to get this information into the port? When we see how important this is for neurodevelopment, for brain development in children, why is it taking this long? Okay, well, let's, let's turn back. Before we jump into this study, a, a 2017 analysis, and I'll put it up on the screen. A 2017 analysis uh, in the American Journal of Lifestyle Medicine concluded that 95% of adults and children don't consume the amount of fiber recommended for good health. Now, it's my personal opinion that fiber should be identified as the fourth macronutrient. Protein, carbs, fats, fiber. We need all four of these in large quantities, and there's good reason for that. You need protein for building materials, same with fats to some degree, as well as energy and carbs are tied to all kinds of phytonutrients in plants. So they're very important too for overall health as well as feeding the carbohydrates, the glucose that our brain needs, 25% of the glucose that our body consumes is actually soaked up by the brain. Yep, our brain uses a whopping 115 milligrams of glucose every single day just to function. It's a big sugar hog. Um, not that I'm suggesting you should go out and just consume sugar. No, you should eat it in its whole food state. Don't eat isolates. An example of not eating isolates, you can get poppy seeds and on a bagel, they're fine. You do poppy seeds in refined process and you get uh, opium. You refine it even more, you get morphine. You refine it even further, you get heroin. This is just an example of the refining process. A coca leaf, you chew on it, you get a little buzz. Uh, you refine it, you get cocaine and you refine it even further, you get crack. Well, see what the refining and isolating does? <laughs> Takes natural, healthy foods with lots of different phytochemicals in it to balance the body out and turns them into just really strong and detrimental uh, to our health. So don't isolate. Get your foods in the whole food state. So this one is looking at fiber. So 95% of people are not consuming enough fiber. We know this. Um, we can look back at studies on uh, caprolites. Caprolites are fossilized human poop. So ancient man, for the last 100,000 years, has been consuming anywhere from 100 to 250 grams of fiber a day. To put that in perspective, the average American eats about 10 to 15 grams of fiber a day. So our ancient ancestors, and, and I'm talking not Neanderthals, not uh, unrelated, but real homo sapiens sapiens, the same as human beings as, as us today with a smaller brain function. And that may be the key because they were consuming so much fiber in Africa, 120 grams of fiber per day. In North America, the caprolites showed that they ate up to 225 grams of fiber a day. In South America, 100 grams, same with Australia. So all over the globe, ancient humans, ancient hominids, homo sapiens sapiens, same as us, were consuming 100 to 200 grams of fiber each and every day. That means they were eating most, if not only, plants. This is the only way you can get that much fiber into the body. And because we've changed the diet and lifestyle here, is that important to brain? Well, we saw an explosion of brain development 
with these high fiber diets. We saw Homo sapiens, early Homo sapiens, expand their brain size tremendously. Okay, so what does this modern study say? Well, let's look at modern humans. Now, that was generations, right? Evolutionary process over 10,000 years of our brain developing because of high fiber diets, most likely because of the amount of glucose and starches that were in the plants that we're consuming, feeding our brain, allowing it to develop because you, your brain needs energy. Your brain almost exclusively feeds on glucose. In order to get that much glucose in, you have to eat carbohydrates, especially starches, which are loaded with glucose. And they were eating tubers and, and onions and, and root vegetables and starchy vegetables that would supply a lot of that glucose and all this fiber too as well. So that was happening over 100,000 years to develop the brain. What about in a single lifetime? Well, this is what makes this study so powerful. Now, this is the study right here, uh, right up on the screen. The study is called maternal dietary fiber intake during pregnancy and child development. Okay, why is this really important? Because of what they found. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and put it up on screen because it's mind-blowing to me. The lowest intakes of dietary fiber during pregnancy were associated with a 51% increase risk of delayed communication skills and a 45% increased risk of delayed fine motor skills, as well as delayed development in problem solving and in social skills. I mean, just about every aspect from critical thinking to motor, uh, the mind, motor, uh, physical development, to communication skills, to social skills, to problem solving, all took a heavy hit when they looked at that. And this was quite a big study uh, done in uh, Japan, uh, I believe. Um, huge study, actually. So what's going on here? Now, I want to caution that this is a corollary study, meaning that there is a correlation between how much fiber they took and, and consumed and how much uh, affected the offspring. So the conclusion of the study says, this study showed that maternal dietary fiber deficiency during pregnancy might influence increased risk of neurodevelopment delay in offspring. That's right, just by not eating enough plants, since plants is the only place fiber comes from, there is zero fiber in any animal food, that is meat, dairy, eggs, chicken, fish, no fiber, zero fiber, only plants can make fiber. And remember, you know, that 95% of adults and children aren't consuming enough fiber, not even meeting the minimal amount set by the FDA. Now, the FDA is what, 25 to 35 grams of fiber? When we look back at our ancient ancestors and they're eating 100 grams of fiber, that's four times as much as the RDA is suggesting. Maybe the RDA is way too low and we're not even hitting that. This is really a sad state that we could be affecting brain development in critical development years of our own offspring, our children, we could be holding back their brain development simply because we're not consuming enough plants, i.e. fiber. Okay, so let's take a look at the next study because this next study goes into maybe the possibility of some of the reasons why. And this study is going with the grain, clever little title. Uh, double entendre there, fiber cognition and the microbiota gut-brain access. All right, so we know that the gut has the vagus nerve, which goes directly to the brain. There's a lot of communication directly between the brain and our gut. The whole thing, the nerve system around our, our, our gut is actually sometimes called the second brain uh, because there's such a density of nerves. And this is crosstalk communication. Our brain is signaling to our gut. 
our gut is signaling back to our brain and crosstalking. We do this for hunger, for satiety. We do this for nutrient intake. We do this for calorie intake. We do this for fat intake. There's this constant communication between our gut microbiome, our gut cells, and our brain via the vagus nerve. Okay, so what does this study say? All right, so moreover, the gut, the microbiota gut brain access has emerged as a key conduit for the effects of nutrition on the brain, especially fibers. And the reason being is because they are acted on by specific bacteria to produce a variety of health promoting metabolites. These metabolites, including short chain fatty acids like butyrate, as well as the vagus nerve, the immune system, gut hormones like tryptophan to serotonin, and other pathways have been proposed for underlying mechanisms of this microbiota brain crosstalk. So real important here that if we're not feeding the good guys, the bacteria in our gut, they're not able to communicate well because they don't have the food or the materials to do the cell signaling and hence not perform well and possibly be uh, one of the major contributors to why neurodevelopment in children is stunted when the mother does not eat enough fiber. This is so important if we keep dumbing down, and this is just one generation, this is just one mother being pregnant, giving birth to a child that is now neurodevelopment, brain development stunted because she didn't consume enough fiber, because she did not consume enough plants. I don't want a guilt trip. This is not what this is about. This is about giving you information so that you don't have this happen to your child so that you can prevent it. And it's a simple thing just by consuming more plants. Fortunately, a lot more uh, women are open to becoming plant-based than men are, um, but this may be a contributing factor as we age to as well. So we know that this amazing correlation between fiber, our gut microbiota producing metabolites that across the board from the immune system to brain function to uh, reducing inflammation, all can help in our brain development, even past the infancy age and the developmental age years. So this is why this is so important um, and why I share this information. I want to uh, thank uh, Dr. Milton Mills for sharing this study with me uh, because this is so important, clearly showing that humans should be eating much more fiber, much more plants as part of their diet than we are consuming. Remember, 100 grams in our ancestors of fiber a day, 10 grams on average by Americans. That's 10 times as much plants they were eating than modern Americans are eating right now. We've got to improve that because it's critical and important for neurodevelopment of brains. And, and, and to the point where even the mother not consuming enough can affect a child's brain development. We're passing this along as information. The more we continue to pass on a generation that is developmentally challenged because of our diet, we're just dumbing down our country, dumbing down our people and, and hurting everyone because of it. We need to consume more plants so our brains can develop properly and do like our ancestors do. 10 times more plants consumed hyper development. There was an explosion in brain development from that period of 100,000 years ago to the modern 10,000 year old uh, modern humans. So let's get more fiber into our bodies, into our gut, allow our microbiome to do its magic in creating all these amazing metabolites and um, neurotransmitters and, and immune boosters and short chain fatty acids and all of these signaling, cell signaling and communication crosstalk that help our brains develop, uh, help our bodies recover, protect us from attacks of bacterial and other pathogens, including viruses. So, so important. 
once again, this this studies and the research are showing that we be, should be consuming so much more fiber than we are consuming right now. It's clear we should be on a pre plant predominant diet, even if you don't want to go all the way vegan or plant exclusive, just consuming more of the good foods that our body needs to properly develop, properly function, you're gonna be better off of it. I share this information to help you, not to make anyone wrong, not to make anyone feel guilty about what they have done in the past. We can't change that, but what we can do is share this information with everyone that we can so that we can prevent other people going through heartaches of dealing with poor brain development. It's not necessarily, and it's so easy just to consume more plants in your day. I hope you enjoyed this. Please share it if you can. We all wanna get this information out there. It's so important. Um, thank you for listening. For those of you who do, thank you for listening. If you're listening in the future, we'll always have more data like this showing why plants are the way to go. If you can base your, your diet completely off plants like I do, you can thrive at 60 years of age and enjoy life and be the healthiest and most fit you can be uh, on a completely plant-based diet. Uh, I'm living proof. I want to pay this forward. I'm reaping the benefits. I want those benefits for you too as well, for those of you willing and ready to change. Thank you. We'll see you next week.